Hey there YouTube and our good old faithful castaway crew. It's been a good long minute and finally we've decided to make another video and we're back. Alrighties guys, let's just get right on into this video. Um, we've got quite a few things to cover and I'll keep it as um, concise and sweet and short as possible. So I want to just give a broad update with everything that's been going on. Um, I know we haven't made a video in quite a long time and I'll explain why in just a minute. But um, I'll also be covering, giving you some updates of our house in Philippines. We have a few snippets from my sister-in-law over in Ormoc, who's been checking up on the house quite regularly. Of course, we've got a few from our engineer as well. So I will be adding them in this video. Um, and then I'll make a bigger video regarding a proper update on the progress and the things that have been going on at our home overseas so you guys can get a really good idea of how far it's actually gone and how, how far away we are from potentially leaving all of this behind and uh, heading up to the tropical paradise of the Philippines. So that leads me to also explaining my accident, which you probably gathered from the thumbnail of this video. Um, I had a little bit of a run-in with a nail that was sticking out of my fence here in the backyard um, while doing some yard maintenance. So, on that note, let me show you. So, I was back here, just behind the water tank, um, redoing the garden beds, pretty much redoing this entire dirt area. So, Part of the project obviously involve us being able to put this house on the market, uh, which we still haven't decided actually. We're not sure if we're going to sell or if we're going to rent. So at this stage, um, honestly, I can't comment because I'm not entirely sure. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious and don't call me Shirley. Um, but we'll obviously work out finances and how everything turns out with work. Um, which is another topic that I wanted to bring up as well and I will be going into more depth about these subjects in separate videos but today is just a general just a general discussion about um, what's transpired over the past couple of months and sort of what what the outcomes have been of some of our endeavors and um, yeah it's it's been positive except for except for my little hiccup so let's just get right on into it I was here Basically, I had all these weeds, this lantana grass, growing all through these garden beds back here. So I spent some time cleaning up uh, last week. And I'll just show you if I can get through here. I was working here on this section, ripping everything out. It was completely overgrown. You couldn't even see ground here. It was just completely overrun with all these weeds so I killed them a couple of weeks ago gave them a spray and um, once they all died I ripped them up and threw them in the bin but what I really didn't notice was in the fence here we had a big anchor bolt protruding probably about oh, I'd say 250 mil and I'll, I'll show you I've still I've kept it um, it's in the garage at the moment, so I'll give you a look at how big the bastard actually was. But I was down here, long story short, picking up the weeds, and then I've just stood up. I've gone to turn around. This thing was sticking out over to here, and I've leant forward. I was up against the fence, and I've come up, stood up, and my eye caught straight into the, into the head of the nail. Um, punctured my lower eyelid uh, viewers discretion uh, viewers discretion is advised if you're not good with gross stuff then I suggest you don't watch this part but um, it's healed quite well so it shouldn't be too disgusting but if you're not really too good with wounds and blood and things like that I suggest you look away now so here goes get a cop of that one I reckon you can probably see that pretty well, but so yeah, basically we, um, I drove myself to the hospital with Jan and um, what they said, they did their test, they put some dye in, cleaned up the wound and um, yeah, I had to go to Brisbane for surgery to get the tear duct 
um, repaired or reconstructed. There's apparently some complex structures there under the eyelid. Thankfully, I was like micro millimeters away from puncturing the tear duct. That's just behind the lower eyelid there. Um, after about a nine hour wait there at the hospital, we got looked at, the nurse came and checked me out, she did her tests, the ophthalmologist did what they needed to do, they put my eye under the microscope, put the dye in, and um, consulted with the doctor at the end of the day, and it turns out that everything was okay, um, I didn't need to get the surgery, although that's not confirmed quite yet, I just got to give it two weeks to heal up, and then we'll see if the eye continues to water, and if it continues to produce pus and sap, then I still may need to go in for surgery, but at this rate, it was so swollen when we had it checked that um, we weren't able to see if the tear duct was actually damaged or not. It's just it was just crushed by the swelling of the of the eyelid. So we'll see. But so far, it feels okay. I don't believe not that I'm a doctor or a medical professional in any sense of the word, but it doesn't feel like I'm going to need any any surgery on it. I think it's going to heal up quite nicely. But of course, time will tell. So. Back to what we were talking about. I'm redoing this entire backyard here. So I'm just going to put river rocks down, plant some really nice plants and trees, bushes along the back here. Probably something sharp, maybe like some cactuses or roses or something so Rambo doesn't go ripping them out. Um, and yeah, try to clean this up a little bit over the next few months while we prepare to figure out what we're going to do once the house in Philippines is finished. So. On that note, let me go inside and we'll have a little chat about how the house is going and I'll give you some of those snippets that I promised I'd show you in this video. So let's go. Alrighty guys, so as I've said, it's been a minute and we all owe you a heartfelt apology for taking so long to get something out to you. Now we've been absent but it's been because we've been battling through some highs and lows, uh, emotionally speaking. And honestly, we've been grappling with feelings of, let's say, fear, and maybe even a little bit of hopelessness. <laughs> While also at the same time, um, we've been holding on to some flickers of hope and this, this long burning passion that really fuels our dream of truly being able to set up a life for ourselves in the Philippines. Tiles, finishings, main board, yep. for our supplier. See how it's gonna look. Stay tuned, because it's gonna be exciting. In relation to the house in Philippines, which is what I'm sure most of you really want to dive into, um, this seems to be the content that a lot of people are interested in. So I've got two topics here that are sort of going to converge, and you'll see why. But let's stay on the subject of the house build, the construction and how it's going overseas. So over in Dolores in Ormoc, our engineer, he's back on site. He had a two week break, let the boys have a bit of a rest, spend time with their families because they're actually camping at the house there. So some of them are staying in the carport, you know, some of them are staying in the spare bedrooms. Um, that's how things are done over there. So they actually sleep at the site and then they return back home on the weekends um, and it's not for a long time they usually work till about saturday midday pack up go home have the sunday off and they're back again monday midday um, sometimes in the morning so they're working really hard and we've gotten a heck of a lot done so the backyard fence is nearly complete the gates and all the screens the balustrading for the rooftops and for the deckings are all being done the inside is pretty much finished the next step is going to be the kitchen cabinetry and the appliances which is going to be a really big expense that's probably the biggest one um, thankfully we've got the cash for it the car's gone guys it's <laughs> that's it she's over it was very sad to see it go but um, these are the sacrifices we make for the ultimate goals that we want to achieve the things that we want to see in our lives so sometimes we have to detach from the things we love um, kind of as a blessing in disguise as a sacrifice into seeing something else manifest and appropriate into reality. Um, so that's happened and 
It's a bittersweet feeling, but we know that the money's going to be put to a good cause and that our home is, is it's really, it's, you know, it's just rising out of the ground, you know, like a phoenix from the ashes. And we're really happy to see the progress that's being done on it. So we've already given you a few snippets in this video and here's just a few more throughout this video. So this leads me on to my next topic. Now guys, for those of you who follow and support us, you already know full well that this vlog is our raw and unfiltered journey where we share every detail, every ambition, and every setback, and every triumph. And for those just joining us, I would like to invite you to just take a moment to explore our channel page, um, catch up on our story, and ultimately join us. Come along with us on this adventure. We'd be really pleased and grateful to have you guys. Um, but for our seasoned supporters, your unwavering encouragement really means the world to us, as always. So, the most noteworthy, and sometimes it seems the most sensitive question, why the Philippines? Like, why this radical departure from our lives in Australia? That which is deemed the benchmark or the target for most people, especially from foreign countries, you know, it's like, it's the status quo. Well, I'll do my best to break it down for you in the most coherent way that I honestly know how. So look, as your average working class couple, we've come to see the flaws in this relentless pursuit of material wealth that seems to be what dominates Western society, right? So Jan's Filipino roots and my travels to quite a few Southeast Asian countries in the world um, have really opened up our eyes to different perspectives, um, ones that challenge the narrative of endless consumption and this, this trivial status uh, status seeking. Now, I just recently rewatched uh, The Matrix, and for those of you who've seen it, you might even feel the exact same way. But I'll be honest, when we re-watched this movie, it felt Jake like Red. it held a Stay mirror Red. up to our reality. Like, it seems that we're plugged into this inescapable construct that doesn't allow for alternative thought or, or lifestyle. Um, it's geared negatively towards anyone who decides to question the system or try to leave outside of its walls. Like, listen up guys, I've had it up to here with the absolute hypocrisy and incompetence of our so-called wealthy country. Like, just the other day, I flicked on the news and what do I see? Our government is, a, is supposedly cracking down on people who dare to live in caravans. Now, if it's not hard enough already, for the poor and the young to find a home that they can afford to buy or even rent? Have you seen what's happening to house prices? Tiny homes, container homes, you know, and this is on their own damn properties, right? Bought, paid, owned. At this very time, the New South Wales government is considering a new law it's drawn up to crack down on people using their caravan as a home on private property. Now, just let me get this straight. We're in the midst of a housing crisis with a rental vacancy rate at a pathetic 0.4%. We are in the grip of a rental and homeless crisis, the likes we've never seen before in this, the lucky country. Sky high house prices that even interest rate hikes can't tame. And working class, working families with jobs living in tents and cars because there simply aren't enough houses to go around. Too many people, not enough homes, creating misery and a sense of hopelessness. I've never seen anything like it. Families facing homelessness. Have you had the discussion with them that they might need to live in a tent? And what's the government's brilliant solution? To harass and vilify people who are just trying to provide shelter for themselves and their families in a way that is according to their means. I mean, seriously, how messed up is that? Like, just fathom this for a second. This is supposed to be the land 
of the free, where you supposedly own your own land, yet you're not allowed to live on it according to your own damn means. What if you can't afford to build a traditional house, right? Better yet, great example was during COVID. What if there aren't enough builders left after the carnage the COVID left behind? We are standing in what was my dream. The single mum spent her life savings on this before her builder suddenly abandoned the site in September last year. I actually had a full breakdown and I lost my job. All of those bankruptcies, all of those business liquidations, um, and let's not even get started on the ridiculous regulations and all that red bloody tape that strangle any attempt to do something as basic as living on your own land. You know, it's, it really makes me sick. It's, it feels like a slap in the face. to every hard-working Australian struggling to make ends meet. And <laughs> you wanna talk about poverty. This is, this is the kicker that I hear all the time coming from people that don't understand the structure of our system. They say, you know, there's poverty in the Philippines, there's poverty in Cambodia and Vietnam and Thailand. Now, let's talk about how even the poorest of people in the Philippines, in Thailand, Cambodia, wherever you wanna point the finger to, how can they still manage to eke out an existence, a living, right, in their own little bamboo hut on their own piece of land? I went there, I've seen it. Yeah, maybe they're sitting on the floor in the bamboo hut, but they have land, they have shelter, they've got their water. So forgive me if I can't sit back and wave the flag for this country anymore. The land of opportunity has become a nightmare of bureaucracy, and inequality. Right now, experts say this is the worst housing crisis we've seen in decades. Where working families are forced into the streets while politicians twiddle their thumbs. I, for one, have had enough. And I will no longer sing the praises of this, this cesspool of corruption and greed. Like, it's just a never-ending cycle that leaves us perpetually dissatisfied and disconnected from the true essence of life. And so we've, we have chosen a different path, one that will prioritize, hopefully, inner peace, contentment, and spiritual wealth over material riches. See, I feel that moving overseas may seem like a drastic step in many people's eyes, but guys, follow me here. Sometimes you have to remove yourself from the environment that's holding you back. For example, this is the one that I like to use a lot. It's like trying to quit smoking, right? While you're surrounded in a room full of smokers. The temptation's always going to be there, which inevitably will pull you back into these old habits. And in the same way, I feel that living in the West can feel like being trapped in a cycle of consumerism and discontent. Like for Jan and I, this journey is about aligning our lives with our values, about preparing for the challenges that lie ahead, both personally and spiritually. Now, without going too much off topic here, we believe in God, we believe in Jesus Christ as a son of God and as our savior, and we know the world is changing rapidly. Whether you're an atheist, a Christian, a Muslim, a Buddhist, we can all agree it's changing rapidly. And if we're to navigate these changes with integrity and clarity despite our beliefs, we need to free ourselves from the trappings of the false system that surrounds all of us. This is what my gut has been telling me for a really, really long time, guys. And I feel like if I don't make the affirmative decision to act upon it now, I feel I'll be left with many regrets, wishing I had done something. I wish I had done something earlier. I wish I'd gotten prepared. Um, but anyway, that's enough about us. We wanna hear from you. Do you share our perspective or do you just think we're off our rockers? Guys, drop us a comment below and let's start a conversation. If you're intrigued by these topics, if you crave more thought-provoking content, hit that subscribe button 
and join us on this journey of exploration and enlightenment. Until next time, this is The Castaway Couple, signing off.